Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. All right, guys. Uh, uh, game's almost over. Bottom of the fourth period. Two outs. Oh, Josh. Oh, my God. Please stop. Josh, we're playing football here. Where's the soccer ball? I, oh, God. We are in the end of the fourth quarter. We just have to hold them here and not get embarrassed any further. <sighs> Does anyone else hear that chanting? I don't know. I can barely hear them over the cheers of our crowd. All right, Dan. Lay it on us. Bring that President Whitmore motivational speech. You mean the rousing speech? Okay, guys. All right, all right. Bring it in. Here's the plan. Here's the plan. All right, what is it? What is it? What is all right, it? all right. We do nothing. It's the last down. We're on our one-yard line. We're tired. It's cold. They're a football podcast made of actual football players. Their defense is like Mack trucks with limbs. There's only three of us. The only reason why it's even as close as it is is because they're going easy on us. If they want to, they can just take a knee and this game will be over. Hopefully, that's exactly what they do. So, I guess... Try not to bleed too much. Awesome! I'm pumped! Yes, let's do this. Break! Break. Alright. What the hell are they chanting? Wait, wait, wait. Are they actually going to play this final down? What the hell's up with their quarterback? He's like walking like an old person. Did someone's grandpa walk onto the field? Oh my god, somebody get that guy a walker. What is this, a geriatric podcast? All right, whatever. Let's just get this over with. Blue 42. Blue 42. Hike! Hike! How do you like being the cream of that Dan and Josh Oreo? Huh, Grandpa? Gross. Holy shit! Fumble! Tom! Oh, God, 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 God. Run, oh, run, shit, run! Oh, shit, 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 oh, shit! Touchdown! Oh, my God! Oh, my God, did we just score? Run, 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 run! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Holy shit, I can't believe it! We actually won! Yeah! We did it! Why are they booing us? We won! Whatever, you fans can stick it, brother! Fuck yeah. yeah! Fuck you! Welcome to the fuck train! Yeah, fuck you! And you! And you! Flip it off the audience! Yeah! Two words for ya! Fuck y'all! So I guess we could roll out a victory party. So what should we do then? Oh shit. Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. and sliding into home with the classic Chadwick Boseman film about the legendary Jackie Robinson himself, 42! It's curveballs and clinch plays every Tuesday here at the Fire Pit. Play it all! Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome back to another episode of the Fire Pit. I'm Tom the editor, Thompson, and we're at halftime of the Fire Pit Strikes Out, heading towards 42. And boy, oh boy, do we have a halftime show for you. We escaped the ring and ran the bases and are now barreling ahead towards tonight's film. And per our rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them to this one. 
now to tell us more about what we're watching and who's we're watching and what and why we're watching this i lateral over to josh josh Hua. thank you tom josh the cue ball reginald here and last week we watched mr bob duvall and robert prosky conspire to ruin the career of one robert red for hell hydra sound confusing it was but tonight robert prosky moves into a much more friendlier role that of Father Kavanaugh in tonight's film, Rudy. 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 Sorry, I can't say that name without starting the chant. But anywho, it's a 1993 football classic. A true underdog story. Not with an actual underdog. I always think of the, the, the cartoon, the un, uh, underdog, whenever I hear underdog story. Moving on. But now to give us a bit more of a rundown on this film. Not underdog, Rudy. Um, I send things over to Dan. Thanks, Josh. Beautiful segue. I'm Dan, the angry one, Nigel. Uh, Josh decided to change up my nickname. And I did not, actually. You suggested it, and I liked it. And as mentioned tonight, we are watching 1993's Rudy, also starring Sean Astin, John Favreau, Ned Beatty, Charles S. Dutton, really kind of an all-star cast of character actors. Uh, more on that when Tom gets to the meta on this film. Uh, it had a release date of September 18th, 1993 at the Toronto Film Festival. Uh, and then about a month later, in, on October 15th of 93, it was released uh, in the United States. It had a budget of about $12 million, a box office of about uh, 22.8, 23, we'll say. It has a Rotten Tomato score of 78% with the audience as a 90%. So that's not a, that, that's a 10% gap almost. Mm -hmm. uh, and an IMDb score of seven and a half out of 10. So it should be a good film. Should be. Should, should be. be. Should be. We've, uh, should we've be. learned from yeah, past we've been, movies. Yeah, and we've been burned on movies that should be good, but. <laughs> Natural. Woof. <laughs> 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 You fans can stick it, brother. Anyways, so <laughs> that's the the reason for the name change. Stan has done a heel turn. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, this this movie is one of those sports movies that's very much considered one of the best of all time, um, one of the greatest ones ever written. And I think it was done. Tom, can you verify this with the meta? Was it done by the same guy who did Hoosiers? It, it was. Is. It was. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I know my name's not Tom, but I just listened to that episode. Yeah. So the guy who won or did Hoosiers seems to really like Indiana sports underdog movies. But yeah, this this movie stars Samwise Gamgee as he tries to make the Notre Dame football team. And we'll see if he succeeds. I do have some trivia on the movie. Not a lot. I mean, there's, there's a lot of trivia about this film, but I, I kind of had to narrow some things down because or else we'd be here all night. But there's quite a bit of trivia on this film. There's one big omission in the movie. The movie makes it seem like Rudy doesn't do anything after high school except go to the steel industry for about three, four, five years before he starts trying to get on the Notre Dame football team. Um, actually, that's not true. This four-year gap in his time between high school and Notre Dame is he went to the Navy. Mm. Um, yeah, he served in the yeah the actual Rudy served in the United States Navy as a yeoman on communications vessels. Um, before he uh. After he got after well after his service was over, he went back. He moved back to South Bend and then tried to get on the Notre Dame football team because that was his dream. Oh, wow. but the movie the movie omits his navy. Well, it's weird. The movie omits his navy experiences and they don't show it and they don't mention it. But he does always carry a duffel bag around with him in the movie that has his initials and the initials USN on it. So he's carrying his navy duffel bag in the movie. But yeah, wow, well, and this is like what takes place in 1950. So he would have been like around during the Korean War, right? Seventies. 70s oh. the movie takes place in the 70s oh okay i um, thought it was older than that no no this movie takes place in the 70s it was um, about a 20 year gap from when it happened to the movie being made oh okay yeah t josh is right that was actually another bit of trivia i had the movie takes place almost on the 20th anniversary of when he joined you're the team. welcome yeah. for doing your job thank you uh there was a couple other things i had let me scroll down on my document I had one that Tom and I found at the same time. Uh, this movie is filmed on the actual location of the Notre Dame campus and the football stadium. It was the first film that was filmed at Notre Dame uh, since the Newt Rockney All-American. And for those that don't know, uh, that is the win one for the Gipper movie uh, stars Ronald Reagan. And he's the yeah, he's the one that says win one for the Gipper. But this was the first movie that was allowed to be filmed on Notre Dame's campus since that film. 
Um, it actually adds a little authenticity to the movie that they actually filmed it on Notre Dame's campus, which actually hasn't changed all that much from the 70s to the 90s. I imagine it's a little different now because of the more modern buildings that have been going up in college campuses all over the country. But I can't imagine it was that much different from 1974 to 1993. Um, the real Rudy it can actually be seen in the crowd at the end of the film when they get ready to play Rudy at the end of the movie while the crowd is chanting Rudy, Rudy. The camera points to the crowd and then cuts to a close up of Rudy's father, quote unquote, and brother, quote unquote. Uh, Daniel Rudy Rudinger, the real Rudy, can be seen to the left of his, quote unquote, father, played by Ned Beatty. Uh, Rudy is wearing a plaid driving cap and a dark coat with white fur collar. But yeah, the real Rudy is seen at the very end of this film. Hmm, I have to look out for him now. Mm -hmm. Couple last bits of trivia. Um, This movie is based on a true story. But a lot of people were omitted from the actual story. Um, in fact, he has no brother named Frank in real life. The character of Frank is all of the people who told Rudy he couldn't do it rolled into one person. Uh, same with the character of Fortune, which is Charles S. Dutton's character. He's also a combination of about three or four different people that helped him realize his dream of playing for Notre Dame. Nice. Yeah, it's just uh, they didn't have time to get everyone that had some kind of an impact in Rudy's life, which that makes sense. I mean, if they're going to make a movie about any of us, they'd have to combine some character, some people into one or two people. See, in the story of my life, I would only have one best friend. His name would be Dam. He'd be a combination of you two. And if he was played by Charles S. Dutton, I'd be OK with that. I'd be totally fine if Charles S. Dutton played me in a film. That'd be yeah. cool. Yeah, like animal game of all of us yeah. into one person. Yeah, I would only accept The Rock playing me in any biographical. But movie. Charles S. Dutton <laughs> was in a show called Rock. Anyways, ah. so <laughs> and uh, there was almost a gaffe in the movie. There's a sign above the stairs in the Notre Dame locker room that lists their national championships that won throughout the years. Mm -hmm. And while they were originally filming the movie, they they noticed in principal photography on uh, during one of the dailies that they hadn't fixed the sign and that the sign in the scene was listing championships from 1977 and 1988, which are years that haven't happened yet in the movie. They had to go back and make a sign that looked like the one from 1974 that had, didn't have the championships from 77 and 88. Oh, nice. in there. Yeah. But they, they realized it in the dailies. Like, wait a minute, that hasn't happened yet. We can't. <laughs> like, Whoops. How, yeah. how does Notre Dame know they're going to win the national championship 14 years after this movie's come out? Or after this, don't movie worry, guys. Place. Don't worry, guys. It's just it's, it's hopeful planning. We we can <laughs> suck until then. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, speaking of the crowd, where the real Rudy shows up, the crowd scenes during Rudy's final game were filmed during halftime at a real game between Notre Dame and Boston College during 1992. You can tell by the colors that Boston College fans wear. Ah, who do they play in the final game? In the I don't actual... remember in the movie. I haven't seen this movie in forever. So okay. I don't know who it's they're funny actually that playing. You, uh, were, were you trying to do a play because you said Who Day play? No. <laughs> and Who Day is a Bengals chant. And the I Bengals know. are an NFL team. They don't play in college. That's But that's what he said. That's what Tom said. Oh. Moving on. <laughs> I hate you both. We're all you've got. This is true. <laughs> so Those are our next shirts. <laughs> Uh, UFC Hall of Famer and former WWE superstar Dan the Beast Severin is actually an extra in this movie as a player doing drills. This is right after he finished college at Arizona State University. So as a WWE fan, I thought that was kind of cool. Dan the Beast Severin wasn't exactly memorable in WWE, except his entrance music was pretty memorable in WWE. But that's all I have for my trivia. So I'm going to stop my trivia for there and I can pepper some more in as we watch the movie tonight. Uh, Tom, what about the meta of this film? Oh, I'm glad you asked, Nigel, because I've got a bit of information on this film, and it's quite, quite refreshing. So we are watching Rudy, tagline, sometimes a winner is a dreamer who just won't quit. Summary, Rudy Rudiger, played by Sean Astin, does not have the grades, the size, or the talent but he is determined to overcome the odds and fulfill his dream of playing football for Notre Dame. A pretty straightforward story, but sometimes simplicity is the way. As noted, loosely based on the true story of Rudy Rudiger, who wrote the short story that this movie would be based on. So this movie had, in terms of producers, there were at least seven of them. And for almost all of them, if this wasn't their first film, it was 
one that they backed right after they backed So I Married an Axe Murderer and right before betting on Godzilla 2000. Uh, not the best bets here. Um, the oof, two, Yeah, oof. but at least two of them, uh, Robert and Freed, uh, at least they you know backed Man of the Year and Budok Saints. And eventually, Carrie Woods would uh, produce Scream and Swingers. Swingers being a rather important movie in the future, and we'll get to why in a second. But this film sees the return of two individuals, the writer and the director, some returning faces to the podcast. Dan Pizzo wrote this film, and he is known for writing Hoosiers. He's done almost exclusively sports films since, and boy, does he do it well. And directed by David Anspaugh, who also directed Hoosiers. Uh, He'd go on to direct uh, at least one more sports movie after this, The Game of Our Lives, but he's done mostly non-memorable dramas. But yeah, Hoosiers. So two right off the bat, we know we're going to love. And as Nigel noted, this is just a solid cast of actors and actresses, all high B, low A listers that you'd recognize from somewhere and a bit of everywhere. Charles S. Dutton, Ned Beatty, Lily Taylor, John Favreau, Vince Vaughn, Sean Astin as our lead, Robert Protsky, um, the judge from the previous film, The Natural, and WWE Hall of Famer Al Snow who is an uncredited uh, football player as well. So two WWE actors in this film, Nigel, and all of them solid acting chops. Get that because Al Snow, he does wrestling chops. What does everybody want? Me to carry on with this (laughs) meta. Sorry. But but there are a lot of people. with the wrestling trivia. Sorry, what? (laughs) But there are a lot of people. I could go in depth with some of this, but I'm going to... Uh, try to focus on the main ones since the majority have less screen time than James Earl Jones in The Greatest. But we start with Sean Astin as Rudy, the titular underdog hero of our story, known for playing the, well, kind of the underdog everyman archetype. Everything he's in, he kind of stands out just by being the everyman. I mean, Goonies is how he started. He's just the guy you just get behind. Ned Beatty, who plays Daniel Rudiger, who's Rudy's dad in this, also kind of an everyman And a returning actor, we saw him as Otis in Superman. Just a really great character actor. Charles S. Dutton is the inspirational janitor Fortune. Great dramatic actor as well. Distinguished gentleman in Aliens 3 and A Time to Kill. Great. And there are two other individuals here. Jon Favreau and Vince Bond, both of whom this would be their first Credited roles, John Favreau plays D-Bob, kind of like the friend of Rudy who's supportive. And Vince Vaughn plays Jamie O'Hara, who is Rudy's foil on this team. He's the one that you know has all the talent but no heart. And it's interesting because both of these individuals, uh, they I think they kind of met here. And they would go on to make Swingers, which was produced by Carrie Woods. And because of Swingers, which was directed by Jon Favreau, he would eventually go on to direct Iron Man and bring us the MCU. So we have kind of this movie to thank for the Marvel Cinematic Universe because it brought these kids together, which I thought was interesting. But moving on to the music, which would be playing right here, Jerry Goldsmith, who's been doing a score since 1953, also did the score for two films that have been on this podcast, Hoosiers and Inner Space. And he's also done, for you Trekkies out there, Star Trek The Motion Picture, Star Trek V, First Contact, Insurrection, and Nemesis. So if you like those movies, you like his music. And he's done so much. I like so those much. scores. <laughs> and the best parts of those movies, some of them. Holy shit, that's right. With the exception of First Contact, he's done almost all shitty Star Trek films. Oh, boy, maybe I shouldn't have mentioned that. But he's done so many other films that you can just forget those. In terms of novelty, this one didn't win any awards that I could see. I don't even think it was nominated. But in terms of people's you know movies to watch lists, in 2006, AFI placed this film on its 100 years, 100 cheers list, where it was ranked number 54. And in 2005, this movie was named one of the best 25 sports movies of the past 25 years on ESPN and ranked 
the 54th most inspiring film on all time in the AFI 100 Years series. So summary, this movie may have been paid for by people looking for just another Hollywood hit, but it's got a solid cast and crew written by, directed by guys who know how to make an underdog sports movie and is still highly regarded to this day. But now that we know um, kind of what this movie's about, I wonder what the box office looked like. So Josh... What the, what was it like for this movie when it came out to people the first time? Well, um, as you guys said, it came out in October of uh, 1993. It uh, pulled in a total of $22 million on a budget of about 12. It didn't get its wide release until its second week. Um, it premiered at 17 at the box office. Ooh, damn. Yeah, it did not do well. So at number one at the box office that particular weekend, uh, in its opening weekend, was Demolition Man. And number two was uh, the Beverly Hillbillies. Also at the box office that weekend was Cool Runnings, The Good Son with Macaulay Culkin, The Fugitive, Free Willy, one of Dan's favorite movies, Gettysburg. Ooh, I love that film. Number 19 was Jurassic Park on its 19th week of release. And on its first week of release, premiering in two theaters, was the Disney film Nightmare Before Christmas. Damn. Yeah. But on its second week of release, when it went wide, there was really no big movies. But Rudy did go from 17th to number five. Um, there was no new releases that particular weekend. so Had the but, playing uh, field to itself, more or less. Pretty much. I mean, when it, was re- it opened up in its wide release. The Nightmare Before Christmas blew up. It upped its release to 563 theaters, so 561 more theaters. Mm-hmm. That actually moved up from number 20 to number three in the box office. Just lapping Rudy. Rudy opened in uh, about 1,300 more theaters. Then on its final week of release... Or, yeah, this final week, because it didn't run for very long. Rudy went from October to November, a little over a month. It uh, Its final week of release, um, Adam's Family Values was number one in the box office. Well, that makes sense. That's just a good, solid 90s film. That was. The Adam's Family movies were really good. But, uh, yeah, so Rudy wasn't all that big of a show in the box office. I mean, it lasted a month. It, did, it pulled in maybe twice his budget. And in the given the '90s and their advertising budgets, I would even say that it barely broke even. Yeah, yeah. There's not a lot to take away from that, but I imagine the studios didn't have a lot of faith in it, based off of these box office numbers. Eh, probably just your standard like um, Oscar bait sort of film, just something to fill the screen until the big blockbusters came out or something like that. Kind of like um. Mm. Oh, the the uh, prison movie, uh, Shawshank. Well, Shawshank had quite a long run in the box office, didn't it? Yeah, yeah it, it did. It did. Yeah, this one had a month, and it was barely premiered in 1,400 theaters. Like, Demolition Man was on its second week of release, and it was in 2,200 theaters. Beverly Hillbillies premiered in 2,100 theaters. Hell, Jurassic Park, on its 19th week of release, was in 500 theaters. That's Again, that still baffles me. I love this film. And considering how popular it is, how much it is in the zeitgeist of sports and sports movies, you'd think it like blew the box office doors open. But wow. Yeah, this is one of those classic movies that did better on rental than it did in theaters. Yeah, that's I, I, I don't get that sometimes. Yeah, that's the wonderful world of the box office. The crowd is fickle. Yeah. But, uh... Anywho, so I'm, that's all I've got for box office. Thompson, what are you hoping to get out of this viewing? Well, um, I believe it's been mentioned. So we've all seen this film at least once. Um, it's been a while for some of us, been more recent for others. I love this film when I saw I think I saw it like it's on TV or whatever, but I don't really have too many memories associated with this film. I think... My first time ever seeing it was just when it came on TV, like HBO or whatever. And then eventually we watched it on like VHS or DVD. It's it's not something that, it's not like Star Wars or any of those other films where it's like I have a memory about watching or like a fondness. It's just I remember watching it. I loved it. Um, every time I, you know ran or like did any sports i would hear the rudy music in my head but this has never let me down i don't see it letting me down it's going to be a nice palate cleanser from the last two films we saw for certain at least that's uh, my take on it unless i see something that i've missed in the past four or five viewings 
Uh, but I don't expect that. Josh, what about you? Well, um, I'm going to give a little story with this one. Growing up, I was very, very impressionable to sports films. So, like, I remember watching the Pistol Pete um, biography and uh, immediately going out and trying to play basketball afterwards, thinking I'm going to be the best basketball player there ever was. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. Never (laughs) nowhere near the best. But I went out and played basketball for maybe 10 minutes after watching that movie. (laughs) Same thing happened after I watched Rudy. Very impressionable. I wanted to go out and I wanted to play football for Notre Dame. And I said that for probably a year. Playing in factual football for probably, again, five to 15 minutes. Um, I was not a sports sports kid. I wasn't very athletic. Did not like sports. But I wanted to play football for Notre Dame. But I loved this movie because it, you know, did that to me. Again, very impressionable. Mm-hmm. Good thing I didn't get into porn earlier than I did. <laughs> um, Gross. <laughs> now I'm looking forward to tonight's film. I've seen this more recently than I have seen The Natural. Now, given how our reaction to The Natural was last week, I don't think that I'm going to have a similar post-movie reaction to that one. Because I enjoyed watching The Natural as I was watching it. It was on reflection that we find that I kind of realized that the movie was not... The story was not as good as it nostalgia had led me to believe it was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This one, I am seen it more than once i believe i've only seen the natural once maybe twice in my entire life but this one i have seen multiple times and i know that i'm going to enjoy this film i am curious of more objective viewing this time around Mm -hmm. um as we do you know so let's see if we spot anything different hopefully i don't deteriorate my nostalgia of said film but uh that's all i've got for it nigel how about you i'm cautiously optimistic um up until last week in my top five favorite sports movies of all time, the natural was in there and now it's dropped down considerably, but Hoosiers was also there too. And Hoosiers, I still love, like we watched that a a few months ago and I still love Hoosiers. So Mm -hmm. I'm hoping this one, even though I haven't seen it in a while, I'm like, please be good. (laughs) Yeah. You know, don't betray me. Don't, yeah. yeah, yeah. And and then, like I said, the natural didn't hurt me. It just, I left, the movie with like shortly after the credits, like, Oh man, I, I still love this film. It's a really good movie. And then like one little chink in the armor. And all of a sudden I'm like, he's a Mary Sue. God damn it. <laughs> so start thinking about it. But um, now I'm cautiously optimistic. I, I really do think I'm still going to enjoy this film and I'm not even a Notre Dame football fan by any stretch of the imagination, mm-hmm. but I love this movie. It's in my top five, top 10 favorite sports films of all time. And I, this may be my number two or number three favorite football movie of all time. But yeah, so um, I'm looking forward to watching it. And uh, I just um, I really, really, really hope I don't come out of this film wanting to pick it apart. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm hoping I'm not say. to. Yeah. Yeah. I think I mean, for the most part, I mean, has it become just more of a laundry folding film for you guys anymore? Is this oh, definitely. Like, Given I said I haven't seen the movie in probably about 10 years. Yeah, it used to be Rudy used to be one of those films where like. I don't do it anymore because I don't have cable TV anymore, but you know, when you're channel surfing Mm -hmm. and if I would channel and then I would stop on a channel where this movie was playing, I'd watch the rest of it, no matter where the movie was at, Mm -hmm. you know, whether it was towards the end or even right at the beginning of the film, I'd I'd probably would watch the rest of the film. So Mm -hmm. it was just one of those films for me. I do like this movie, but I just, it's been a while since I've seen, I haven't watched this movie in a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, here's hoping guys clench your butt cheeks because we're going in, you know, though, we know what we want out of this film. I'm curious what other people have thought about this film. I am too. Oh, wait, I have trivia. Yes, you do. <laughs> All right, boys, you guys ready? Tom, you ready to lose again? Um, Are you ready to be disappointed by me not losing? Put me in, coach. I got what it takes. No. <laughs> All right. You were, you were cut three months ago. Not nah, beans, not again. All right, here we go. Standard rules apply. Five questions, one tiebreaker. Intense Rudy music plays in the background. All right. Well, since Tom got shut out last week, he is absolutely not going first. So we're going to go with Josh. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah, I know. So unpredictable here at Trivia. No, seriously. I was like curious because I actually looked it up. Last time I went first was like episode 46. Has it really Ooh, been that long of a guys, drought? You guys are very biased against me on go, on picking me to go first. All right, then I could just go ahead and pick Tom to go first if you're going to be an asshole about it. <laughs> no, no, you guys are the assholes, just inadvertently. But go ahead. 
Okay. So <laughs> here's the first review, to Josh, by Mr. Flak Jacket. Flak Jacket? Flak Jacket. Flak Jacket. Oh. It's something that quarterbacks wear. Anyways, Mr. Flak Jacket uh, says, I think a cardboard cutout would have been more convincing in the lead role. Was he watching uh, The Natural? <laughs> 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 Tom, ten more downloads gone. <laughs> <laughs> How dare he besmirch Samwise? I am going to go four out of ten. I'm thinking that's high. I think that's a two out of ten. Well, Tom's not going to get shut out this week. That's a one-star review. Oh damn! Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you were a little high there, Josh. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> but then again, I didn't get the point. <laughs> all right, well, already. Say, I'm already doing better than I did last one, so keep them coming. Yeah, at least you're not going to get shut out two weeks in a row. Hey, I got shut out two weeks in a row, and and still not quite over that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, Tom, this one's directed at you. This is from Doghouse8. Sean Astin is Rudy. Succinct. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm going to say an eight. I'm going to go nine. Tom, dead on eight. Holy shit. Oh, I God. might get shut out tonight. <laughs> Ooh, yes. Oh, my God. All right, Josh. Eddie Z 61 says a whiz bang rock and sock em stinkeroo. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Three out of ten. I'm going to price this right, you. This is a four out of ten. Tom is closest. It's a five. Christ. Yeah, boy. Underdog, come back story. All right. I think uh, this means Tom wins trivia. Um, oh, that's three questions. Yeah. I can get the next two on the head. And oh, yeah. Okay. Way. Okay. Yeah. You can get the next two on the head. All right. So, Tom. Mm hmm. B. Sharky says Notre Dame propaganda, a recruiting film, nothing more. Oh, this is definitely a one. I'm going to say a two. Josh is technically closest. It's another five. That's a five? Really? Yeah, Five-star review. Wow. Well, Tom won, but I didn't get shut out. Yeah, you didn't get shut out. So Tom wins trivia. Josh didn't get shut out. Well, you got to still do all I'm five gonna, questions. I'm going to do the other one. Okay. Okay. Josh, I am the robot man, says, never heard of the guy. <laughs> Well, he's a robot, so I would understand why. I'm going to go four out of ten. This seems like a sarcastic one. I'm going to say Josh is going to get it, but I'm going to say a seven out of ten. Josh is closest without going over to five out of ten again. Ooh, wow. All right, well, Josh, you got two. I did. I did. And the tiebreaker question would have been, drum roll, please. Actually, you don't need a drum roll because it's not going to be uh, working. Josh, Thanos Alfie cool name says chase your dreams rudy is a biography i would have said a seven Ugh, this is a lousy one the past couple ones have been five so i'm gonna say a six josh would have got it right on the money to seven whoa well it's a shame this one doesn't count josh <laughs> it doesn't so i lost by one point yeah so now tom gets to do trivia next week so God damn it. Yeah, god damn it. <laughs> but, sorry, Dan. That's all right. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Honestly, um the negative reviews I gave you were only the only three I could find on IMDb. Like there's a, a most people love this film. Most of the reviews were seven, eights, and nines. And oh, quite a quite a few tens. There were two ones, three twos, a handful of threes, and a quite a few fives. But now like I said, two or three ones. But that that was it. That doesn't surprise me. Again, mm -hmm. this is just a solid me. Solid yeah, it was a lot like film. Hoosiers. It was a lot like trying to find negative reviews for Hoosiers. It's not impossible, but difficult. Well, guys, there was not a lot of negative reviews for The Natural. I think there was like three one-star reviews, three or four two-star reviews. Because it was like, it was to the point where I was trying to find negative reviews for that film, to be ironic. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there wasn't very many below five. Wow. Well, three more that are now. Ooh, well, I win and I don't lose. So next quiz is going to be really intense. I'm going to, um, I'm thinking something a little more. Um, hey, Tom, essay. real quick, real quick, real oh, quick. Oh, yes, Josh, Josh, yes. Before you, before you finish that, that thought, Tom, play the music. Welcome 
back to another underdog episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and guy who didn't believe in you in the beginning, but turned around in the end, Tom! And I tell you, you don't got what it takes to make it to the end of the interspersal. Just give up now. You're only embarrassing yourself. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. No, wait. It's, it's all a bit. It's all a bit. Don't, don't go, go, don't go. Come on, come back, come on. Don't give up. Come on back, 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 back. There we go. You need to stop taking things I say so literally. Gee, many Christmas. But thank you for coming back, literally, to us here at the Fire Pit. Against all odds, the Fire Pit strikes out against the third movie of this journey. The halfway point to the Chadwick Boseman film 42. The team has survived the greatest beat the natural, but can they get past the Rudy? But speaking of getting past, let's see how the team is getting past their most recent leg of their podcast intramural sports type tournament. Four years ago. Yo, Mikey. Yo, who's that old guy? I think he's trying out for the team, Mikey. Yeah, but he looks like he's 90. Oh, don't you know, Mikey? He got that Benjamin Button disease. He actually like a kid. Well, you got rocks for brains, too? Yeah, hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Yeah, what's your name? My name is Ricky. I am eight years old. What are you doing here? Well, my mom died when I was three. And my dad, he was a dancer who lost both of his legs in a car accident. All my siblings are blind and missing six fingers, collectively. All of them. But it's always been my dream to be on this podcast with you guys. Don't you know this podcast life ain't easy, kid? Yeah, we ain't gonna go easy on you just because you got a tragic backstory or something. Ah, uh, he's just showboating, Mikey. That's all he's about. See you on the field, kid grandpa. <laughs> 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 We're cool and he's not. Two years ago. Yo, Ricky, why don't you just give up? You're both too young and too old to play. Yeah, sure, you got the heart that got you on the podcast, but you got the lowest, shittiest job here for a reason. You don't got what it takes to be on the field. Face it, you'll never be more than an editor. And coach, that's just fine with me. I just want to be a part of this podcast team. This has always been my dream, and it may not be much, but it's mine, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Goddamn your heart, Ricky! Goddamn! Yesterday. Coach, look, tomorrow's the big podcast tournament game. You know, I want Ricky to wear my jersey. He deserves it. Coach, I want Ricky to play in my place. He can have my jersey. What the hell? Who are you people? I don't work here! Hey, yo, I want Ricky to play in my spot, too. God's jersey give Ricky. God damn it. Ten minutes ago. Alright, listen up. It's the last down. We're down to their one yard line. They're tired. It's cold. We're a football podcast made of actual football players. Their offense is made up of guys made of off-brand mac and cheese. And there's only three of them. The only reason why it's this close is because we've been going easy on them this whole time. All we gotta do is take a knee, and this is all over. Coach, I think you should play Ricky. Whoa, 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 whoa! What's the matter for you? Why would I do a thing like that? Ricky, 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 Ricky. Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yo, Ricky. Yeah, Coach? You going in. Really? Oh, it's time to live your dreams, Ricky. Let's hit the field, guys. Yeah, Ricky! Blue 42! Blue 42! Hike! Hike! <laughs> this is the greatest moment of my life. Mama, I hope you're watching down on me from heaven. Cuz. How do you like being the cream of that Dan and Josh Oreo? Huh, Grandpa? Holy shit, humble son! Yeah, let's watch the movie, guys! <laughs> <laughs> 
You monsters! Jesus God! Well, if you want to show your support for people who beat up on kids, or want to get the word out about your products on a podcast where podcasters trash the dreams of the elderly, or if you just want to personally share your opinions with the team about crimes against humanity, then um, feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put fire pit in the subject line as well as the reason for your email, whether it's for an ad, an admonishment, an attaboy, a movie recommendation, a recommendation for where the team can go after crushing someone's hopes and dreams, and send it our way. From there, we'll read it, probably go to the nearest orphanage and tell all the kids there that Santa isn't real, steal some candy from babies along the way, I suppose, and never respond. Pure, unadulterated evil. Email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. You did it. You made it to the end of the interspersal. I was wrong about you this whole time. I should have believed in you from the beginning. <laughs> I think I'll let you get back to the episode now. Thank you all for listening, and as always... Good luck. Seriously, monsters. Absolute heels. That old man was eight years old. And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. Oh, I forgot how low scoring games were in the 70s. Mm -hmm. It was three yards and a cloud of dust back then. The coach of the Buckeyes at the time, Woody Hayes, he didn't like to throw the ball. He said... Only three things can happen when you throw the ball, and only one of them's good. I love how Dan always talks like he's like a 60-year-old guy who's been watching football for 45 years. Yeah, he's he's not wearing that helmet for the game. He actually has to wear that helmet all the time. He's that kid. Oh, God. After high school, I'm going to football every day. I'm going to play football every day. And I'm in my mansion at Lake Shore Drive. Go ahead. 1950s and 1960s parents. It's like, your dream is to play college football? No, you're not. You're going to work at a freaking Walmart, and you're going to be bagging groceries till your 40s. Then you're going to kill yourself. <laughs> but, Daddy, it's Christmas. Why you always got to do this? You see, ladies and gentlemen, the problem with dreamers is they usually are not doers. Their achievements are grand up here, but here where it counts, they fall that's not true, sir. A thousand years ago, somebody dreamed up a church, and now you have a job. So, dreamers <laughs> are doers, sir. Tom, Tom edit that out. <laughs> what are we talking about here, Father? Zip. <laughs> John Favreau Happy Hogan uh, Happy Hogan And that girl right there And Happy Hogan again Also weirdly he looks older in this movie Than he did in Swingers Which he made like <laughs> Two or three years later I need your help I want to be your assistant I don't need yeah, assistant. Either help me or go to a prison planet Just saying you want to see a bald Sigourney Weaver? I don't. I kind of do. Oh, that's right. He was in that. He's in Alien 3, yeah. yeah. Probably I the best part about Alien 3. Hmm. I hear they actually paid him extra to shave him his head bald for that role. If That was genius if he worked that into his contract. Because he's been bald his entire career. <laughs> like, I'm not taking this role unless you pay me extra to shave my head. Who is this Charles S. Dutton guy? I don't know. I've never heard of him. But pay him his money. I need him in this movie. Okay. He shows up looking just like this. Then they find a picture of him from the 70s, and he looks just like that. Like a... <laughs> It's like, son of a bitch. You dumb kid. This is what I'm trying to say. Let me put it in words you understand. Your brain not make good college stuff. You go home. What are you trying to tell me, <laughs> teacher? 
I feel like there's a message in there that you're trying to get through to me. Just tell it to me straight. What are my chances? We love watching you fail and be miserable. <laughs> if you're happy, what does that say about me? Huh? It means I can I can be happy too? No, no. You're miserable. I'm miserable. Everybody's miserable. Welcome to the Midwest. Oh God, I've heard this one before. <laughs> yep. Is it the same deal? Is it the same deal the priest offered? <laughs> hey, it's a montage. Oh my God! Officially a sports movie. We have a montage. I didn't think we'd get one until later. Yep, this is a typical Midwestern Christmas. <laughs> a lot of awkward silences and a lot of my brother banging my girlfriend. <laughs> Dad's drunk on the chair. Says I should stop trying to live my dreams. Sad Rudy music. <laughs> What's football boosters? We organize the pet rallies and paint the helmets right before the game and do the car section. The actual football helmets, you guys. That's really That's definitely. Can I touch myself right. while I touch the football helmets? Am I allowed to do that? No. In fact, I need you to give me back that pamphlet right now. <laughs> <laughs> You could pray. <laughs> <laughs> Zip. God damn it, Josh. Not again. <laughs> <coughs> Our version of Rudy is horrible. Is. Montage. Sad, sad music. Montage. Yeah, sad music montage. Sad music montage. We're going to show how hard it is to get better. Feel bad for a hero when he's at his lowest point with a montage. A sad montage. Sorry to interrupt, but I just have to ask you, have we met somewhere before? You know, you look really familiar. Is this the Midwest Christmas you expect? Oh, I was in Swingers. No, I directed. I, I also directed Iron Man. I'm Happy Hogan in the MCU. Um, I'm Chef. I, I did a movie where I'm a chef. It was Friends. She knows me from Friends. As long as she doesn't know him from uh, Cowboys and Aliens. <laughs> Dude, Sean Austin sells it in this scene. Dude, he's a <laughs> great actor. All those blowjobs paid off. Oh All right, let's get to the first drills. Zip. Not again! I <laughs> <laughs> got the really good montage. The montage we've all been waiting Damn, for. Damn, we're on a third montage of the movie. What is this, Rocky Four? I know, <laughs> right? That's why we love it. It just gets the right amount of montages. <laughs> Rudy probably loves watching the games. He kicked my ass, and he kicked my ass, and he kicked my ass. <laughs> he really kicked my ass. Mr. Oh, Frodo! Right. This is our fourth montage. Rudy, oh my god, this is Rudy! Rudy! Rudy. Rudy. <laughs> this really is Rocky IV. You're all the respect of athletic ability, and you hung out with the best college football team in the land for two years, and you're also going to walk out of here with a degree from the University of Notre Dame. Oh shit, yeah, I forgot about that. Another montage! Holy shit! We've got another montage! <laughs> this is number five! Rocky's going to pull Rudy aside and say he's got a problem. <laughs> But I rub my dick on all the helmets. That's another thing we need to talk about. <laughs> Forget I said that too. Tom, edit that out. <laughs> Your game now, gentlemen. Seniors. Last all right, all the seniors line up. Zip. Not again. <laughs> We've had about as many of those jokes as this movie's had montages. <laughs> as in, too many. And the classic slow clap. Uh-oh, I think we're gearing up for montage six, guys. We are... Montage six! Oh my god! <laughs> Rudy, yeah. okay. collection of montages. <laughs> Stop by every now and again. Just body. Oh God, please don't. Cue Rudy oh. inspirational music. Cue montage number seven, gentlemen. Nice. Oh, oh my God, Rudy. 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 During the movie, not the character. Rudy. Rudy. <laughs> Rudy. Rudy. Come on, guys. We know this song. Rudy. 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 
Rude. And Tom, of course, fucks it up. God. I, I was showing the rhythm. You guys fucked it up. All right, we can do this. We can do this. Come on. Rudy. 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 Nigel, help us. in the audio that's causing us. Oh, there's major lag. Rudy. 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 There was a real Rudy. 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 I'll fix it in post! Rudy! 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 Everyone listening! Rudy! 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 Can you imagine being the guy that blocks Rudy and you let him pass you? The fucking ribbing you get! Yeah. He was four feet tall! You let a hobbit stop you! <laughs> I love Charles S. Dutton. He is such a great actor. He, he is. really is. Yeah, he is a great actor. It's like, now my soul can finally rest in peace. And he fades away. <laughs> Maybe the real fortune was the friends we made along the way. Zip. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, say the line. Not again. <laughs> we got a lot of mileage out of that joke. When did you get to Mordor? <laughs> And now, back to the episode. All right, so of the movies we have seen, I think that was a better one of them. Definitely better than the last couple of movies we've watched. But, Nigel, <laughs> your final thoughts. Still in my top favorite sports movies of all time. I really enjoyed this film. I don't think I'm going to turn on it like I did last week on uh, Natural. No, this movie was good, honestly. And even though it does have, like I don't know, like six or seven montages we counted, it didn't bother me. Like, cause I mean, this movie does take place over a few years, like I think four or five years and you can't just film the movie showing all eight, nine, 10 games of the season. Like it's just not feasible. So the montages are fine. You really do root for Rudy in this. Like, you know, you get kind of choked up when he gets that final letter from Notre Dame saying he finally got accepted and all that. Like it's, it's a good feeling and, and it's a perfect underdog story. And I, Really, really, really enjoyed this film. Uh, I don't want to ramble too much because I know we'll mix some thoughts here in a minute. But uh, what about you, Josh? Yeah, I uh, totally agree. I did not start this uh, final thoughts off with my patented hated it line. And I'm disappointed in myself for doing that. <laughs> but at the same time, I was excited to uh, watch this movie tonight. And I'm very glad that even on a objective viewing of it this time around i still thoroughly enjoy it. i don't even have any nitpicks about it like i did about the natural last week because i know mm -hmm. i finished last week and i had a few nitpicks and then tom kind of dug those nitpicks a little further in uh, our final thoughts but i don't even think i have many nitpicks for this one um i thought it was a very well-paced movie i mean some of the pacing felt a little fast at times seven montages i mean if this was any other movie i'd probably bitch about the seven montages but i felt like it really played well into the story because we went through his two years at the junior college thing in under what, a few minutes really i mean he got all three of his rejection letters inside of five minutes without being a four hour long movie you're not gonna see each year of this movie i mean you've got to montage that because you've got to show his failures leading up to his successes. I mean, the movie does a really good job of making failure a part of the journey, you know? Like, he fails a lot. He failed at life because he's short and uh, not very athletic, which they hammer into you over and over again. And then he fails at uh, getting into uh, Notre Dame. He doesn't amazingly fail at getting onto the team. He actually made it his first trial, but he's on the team for two years. He's not good enough to get past the prep team. So he fails at being good at the team. But he's got heart. Like they tell, say constantly, he's got heart. If you had a tenth of the heart of Rudy, you'd be an all American type thing. But uh, in, in the end, the movie was really about his personal connections that he had made with the other players and the other people. Like, if it was just him going out in the field after all of this is said and done, you wouldn't have as much. But seeing the other people's reaction, especially after they either really supported him or really didn't support him, seeing them all excited to see him out on the field and cheering and the players who were constantly beating up on him at practice, I felt that that really made it more impactful. And I thought they did a really, really good job of that. I mean, you could definitely tell the guy who directed Hoosiers directed this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He does such a good job of making you sympathetic towards the lead. You know, you were super sympathetic towards Rudy. Rudy was not a Mary Sue, like, you know, 
Robert Redford was last uh, movie, Hell Hydra. So, because, uh, I mean, he failed at everything. He didn't get good grades. He got three Bs and an A. Um, he got rejected three times. It was literally, he failed every step of the way, but it was those one successes that really pushed it. And I think this movie does a fantastic job of showing that and building up the character to give you that one final, when you finally blow your load, it feels amazing. Tom, to you. <clears throat> nice segue. Yes, that's... <laughs> Um, Zip. Nigel, you know the line. Say it. Not again. <laughs> we, now we have matched the same number of montages with our zip jokes. We're going to get canceled for that. <laughs> Nigel, Sorry. you may know, you know TV tropes a little bit more than me. What is a trope for a Mary Sue for underdogs? You know, the, the character that has no talent no skill, no one believes in them whatsoever, but they just inspire everyone through their dogginess and they get their goal at the end. I'm not quite sure what the... I if, don't think that is a trope. Yeah, I'm not sure. Typically what it is, is they have one one thing they're really, really good at, like uh, the radio, the Forrest Gump. Mm-hmm. Um, to quote Tropic Thunder, you never go full retard, you know? Right, but that's that's a whole other trope, yeah, right? That is, but, there. but that's uh, but that's typically what the trope is. I don't think there's very many, because typically you don't have uh, that I can think of off the top of my head. You don't have people like the situation with Rudy. I think that's what makes the movie unique. Because I don't think there's a lot of movies or stories. Told yeah, I don't think. Yeah, and I, I don't think it's fair to criticize. Uh, Rudy's not. A Mary Sue. A Mary, if Rudy was a Mary Sue, he would be the best player on the Notre Dame team despite his size. And he's not. He's clearly not the best player on that team. He doesn't even make the team. I mean, he doesn't get he doesn't even get to dress until the very last game of his career. Yeah, as mm-hmm. a character, Rudy is highly flawed. He is no. anything but a Mary Sue. Oh no, no, that I'm not saying he is a Mary Sue, but he's like you're on asking, that same... so you're just asking for the trope of Rudy. Yeah, he's this, the same coin as a Mary Sue, but he's the other side of that coin. Where let me let me stop real quick. I love this film. I'm an absolute mark for this film, just like I am for Wes Anderson films. But if I'm going to be truly honest, this is underdog porn. This is a lifetime television movie for sports dudes. It's designed to tug your heartstrings and just root. For this guy, it does go way schmaltzy over the top in a lot of it. There's so many people through this film. I know you're laughing. I'm not dogging this film because I I do love it. I am its target audience. But just yes, people, the- he's he's very honest here. Um, if you're curious to get more to learn more about that, definitely Google underdog porn. Don't. Don't safe search on, but no, it's like everyone's just like really cool with him, or they're just like, You're never gonna make it, you're just derp a derp. It's that family guy movie. Oh, the Joe Swanson story. It's like, You're never gonna make it, Joe. It's that level, it's almost cartoonishly villainous, just how hard they smack down on him. But he's just like, I'm gonna make it. I'm going to prove it. And everyone at the end is like, we were wrong about you, Rudy. We were wrong all along. It's designed to just tug at you that way. That's its purpose. And I'm not knocking it. It worked. I loved it. I still love this film, but it is so damn schmaltzy. I think what really helps this film, what keeps it from being that just saccharine bullshit is the fact that he was not the game winning like clincher. It wasn't like this was the game that was going to win them the championships. The goal was he just wanted to play for Notre Dame. And the payoff was he got to play for Notre Dame. He got to be in a game. Sure. There was no way in hell he was going to lose the game for them, but there was no way in hell. He was like the only thing that was going to save the team. The stakes were for him high. The stakes for everybody else was super low. It's like, Comparing it to the natural last week, mm-hmm. them winning the pennant was only major to help out Wilford Brimley's character. You know, that was their conflict. That was their rising action was to try to win the pennant so that he doesn't lose the t- 
team, basically. Yeah. This one <clears throat> was purely a character victory. The mm-hmm. stakes was so small that it only really affected Rudy. You know, and the way that the movie was geared towards that, I thought it was beautifully done in terms of how that they conveyed that. Oh, absolutely. Although I'm going to disagree with you, Josh, on the connections. I felt the connections were superficial and artificial. They had to condense so many people that didn't believe in him and so many people that did believe in him. They came off as just caricatures rather than actual people. So he was a ray for sure, but for underdogs. you He earned it enough but it's just i still mm. did completely disagree calling him any kind of a sue character yeah what's funny is i did a quick search there is no trope for rudy's character i think rudy he, is the trope right there he's an underdog he's so a, trope is something that keeps constantly repeated in, in uh, yeah. zeitgeist and cinema rudy's fairly unique in his term so i think calling him any yeah i agree with you dan calling yeah him i think that Mary that's Sue's. that's almost insulting calling him a mary Sue and putting him in the same breath as Ray from Star Wars or even uh, Robert Redford's character from the, the natural, like he was way more of a Mary Sue than Rudy was almost everything Rudy gets in this movie is earned. He doesn't just get to walk into Notre Dame and go to college. He has to spend two years out of basically a community college, getting his grades up because Notre Dame is a really hard school to get into academically. So he has to even get his grades up before he's even considered. And um, he has to work two times, three times harder than most of the other kids in the, on that, team because he's not as talented as they are uh, athletically and he doesn't even get to dress for the game until the very last game of his career Mm -hmm. i don't think that any of it didn't have those oh go ahead well i'm just saying i think it's just a disservice to call him any kind of a sue someone like that can exist in real life and actually be inspiring i mean there's a lot of people that i've known personally that aren't the best at what they do but they inspire people around them because they either work harder than the people around them or they they put a little more in or things like that And, and that's perfectly fine i don't think that that makes him a mary sue or any kind of a sue character it doesn't mm-hmm. even make him a sympathetic sue like a sympathetic sue goes around and makes you feel sorry for him the entire movie you don't really feel sorry for rudy almost the whole movie because he is working his way through he's earning what he's got so mm-hmm. you know and, and again and then, that- even then it's like even the stuff that we call earned isn't necessarily earned in the context of the film even though the coach divine didn't necessarily acknowledge the promise that the previous coach made. He didn't have to give Rudy the chance to dress. So that wasn't earned on Rudy's part. That wasn't something that he worked towards to get. He was still putting in 100% every practice. Mm-hmm. It was something that he inspired his coach or his teammates yeah. to go forth and do that. that yeah, even- and he even tells the other coach, uh, I can't remember how to say his last name. Sorry, Notre Dame fans, but I can't remember how to say his last name. Arrow is his first name, but um, I want to say Parsinogen or Parsagon or whatever. Like Rudy doesn't even ask to dress because I want to do it. I have to show myself that I did this. Like he wants to dress for his dad. He wants his dad loves Notre Dame football more than life itself. And I need, I want one time my dad see me be on the team. And he even tells him, I don't care if I sit the bench the entire game. I just want to dress for one game. Mm, And that's also incredibly unselfish. Well, I'm going to disagree. And this this is actually now we're getting into just like fan interpretations on this one. But I think there was a part that was not outwardly addressed and maybe a lesser film would have done this. But I think there was a part that's like, no, I'm going to prove to them. If it was just about him being able to play for Notre Dame for himself and no one else, he would not have made that pitch. But it was like, I'm going to prove it. It, it's it was self validation. Yeah, he said, "I'm doing this for my okay, dad, I, and my family." But again, this is fan. No, I, I agree with. Okay, I agree with that. That he was he was definitely saying, you know, when when the coach says, "This is just for you," and he said, "No, it's for everyone that told me I couldn't do it." And all of, all my life, I've heard people tell me you're not going to play football for Notre Dame. Like, yeah, there is a little bit of self validation there, and I, and I don't still don't have a problem with it. And I still think it's disingenuous mm. to call him a Mary Sue. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I, no, I'm not saying he's a Mary Sue, but he is in the Sue diagram. I don't I disagree. Yeah, I, he's he's not he in the Sue diagram. That that by your definition, then Tom. 
every protagonist in every single movie is in the Sue diagram. I think the difference is he doesn't because think about it this way. He's not good at anything and he doesn't succeed at anything. I think the only way Sue should be on his uh, dia- or biography should be misconstrued or something like that. Yeah, how, so, I don't. I, wanna, I, I just yeah, don't see you, how he's a Sue. I just don't see even well, how he's in the same. The way everyone realm. else, everyone else around him is so artificially amplified to be so against him that it just a- intensifies him to an. Uh, the reason he gets to play is because people support him. But they're also kind of just amplified to an almost artificial official level it's just like i think your cynicism and your jadedness are coming out here like you just can't see that someone that you can actually be inspired by someone like that or you can you can follow someone like that like you can't absolutely can contrast it against hoosiers which was another underdog story but it didn't have that that whole manufactured antagonism from the surrounding people the people in the audience the people in the town yeah there were some grievances against the coach and everything else but they felt I think you natural need to go back and rewatch that because they were definitely very much caricatures against the coach in that film not quite like this though dude the, his whole first practice is like Three of the dads or whatever in the town show up and say, "Well, we do practice this way and we do practice that way." Yeah, but and, that's that's and even then, people aren't outwardly going against Rudy in this one. Uh, back to Rudy, like they're just saying, "You can't do it. You can't do it." They're just it's like mm-hmm. even then, people are like you need to calm down on the uh, fo- on the field. They're not antagonistic in that way. They're just you know they're not uh, they don't have any outward antagonism. They're very but they're either verbal. with him 100% or they're against him 100%. I disagree. There's Look really at the one not- guy who didn't get to dress with him. Remember that guy? He was another walk-on. He was like, I'm only here because my dad's paying my tuition. Mm-hmm. They told him, calm down, calm down. But yeah. at the end, it's like, you inspired me. You're just a phony, Rudy. Yeah, he was you very much in the gray when it comes to uh, support for Rudy. Because, I mean, he turned on him fairly quick when Rudy tried to quit. Well, he was a foil character. He was a, the foils. like Yeah, but he comes around. He, he starts off with, you know, Rudy, you need to calm down. There's no point in you giving, putting yourself through this in practice and, and busting your shoulder up and busting your ankles up and all that stuff. When you're not going to play, it's stupid. Like, it's stupid to give this much effort to be on the practice squad. And then when Rudy decides to quit when he's not going to dress for the final game, and he tells him, he goes, you know, I used to think like you, but you're the one that inspired me to stay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was he was Rudy's foil character. He was the polar opposite, the guy with all the talent but none of the heart. No, that was that was the running back I guy. That was Vince, Vince Vaughn's Vaughn character. I thought that was Vince Vaughn's character, the skinny guy. No, he's the running back that um, he gets in a fight with Rudy during practice, and the coach tells him that you're on the practice squad now for today. Holy shit, yeah, wow. Okay, wow. He's in, and at the end of the movie, he's the one that tells the quarterback, who was Joe Montana, uh, he's the one that tells the quarterback, we need to score on this play because as long as the offense is out here, Rudy's not going to get to play. So, yeah, that was that was also Vince Vaughn's character. Oh, wow. Wow, he did not look. But let me be clear. Everything else about this film was well done. The, the cinematography, the music, the acting, everything else. It's just I'm noticing that... It's very Hollywood, the way they did this. It is exaggerated. It Its purpose was to get you behind Rudy and get you rooting for Rudy. And just by the end of it, just like get excited that he made it. And it did its job. I don't see how else they could have done yes. it. Okay, this I is- agree there. It was it was definitely Hollywoodized, but not too Hollywoodized. Because if it was totally Hollywoodized, he would have he they would have put him in and he would have won the game for them. Exactly. That's why I don't think he full. He's in the Sue diagram, but he's not a proper. No, if suit. they would have done it the way Dan just said, <laughs> then I would say he's probably in the Sue diagram, mm-hmm. and that would make us no. such a worse film because we've seen so many other Rudy knockoffs where they did that. No, honestly, just... this movie parallels a lot with like Rocky, especially know? the first one where he mm-hmm. he goes the distance. He doesn't actually win yeah, the first first Rocky, not Rocky two or any of the other Rocky, Rocky. where he just goes the distance with with Apollo Creed. Yeah. He loses at the end, and he wasn't picked because he was, like, the number one heavyweight boxer or he was the next up for the belt. He was picked as a random exposition match as a pity part or as a pity fight. It, it was, yeah, it was like he, the Italian stallion. He sounds like a serial killer or monster movie. So I'm going to give him a shot at the belt. He ain't going to win it, but I'm going to give him a shot. Mm-hmm. But he went the distance, and he went farther. Like, honestly, the parallels similar to Rudy. Um, it was underdog porn. Google it. So <laughs> Don't! 
Yeah. <laughs> Don't listen to Josh. He's not, he's got a bit of a headache and he's not thinking clearly. He's probably running a fever. Probably. But um, yeah, I would, I, I have to say, uh, I, I'm glad that we're returning to formula. Um, <laughs> Dan and Josh enjoying the movie and disagreeing with most of what Tom says. Yeah. Tom's like, I like this movie. It's a good movie. I'm going to tell you why it sucks. It doesn't suck. It's, I mean, it's definitely, you can put it on the background yeah. film. Let me tell you why Rudy's in the same Mary Sue category as Ray from Star Wars, who one of the most polarizing protagonists in the history of cinema versus one of the most appreciated protagonists from the hist- in the history of cinema, but whatever. I'm just saying, there's a reason why there are seven montages in this movie. Well, yeah, it's how they had to tell the story over four years. Is it though? Is it really? So, anywho, <laughs> Tom, segue. <laughs> but those are my final thoughts. Uh, does do you guys have anything else? No, I think we've covered it. And I think we agree that this was a much better movie than the last than the first two movies we've seen on this journey. Mm. Yeah, so definitely a great movie. Definitely a best movie of this journey so far. Yeah, it's in a very enjoyable film. It's not it's not cardboard, it's not Applebee's. It is fun. Watch this movie because it is fun as hell. But that's it for tonight's episode. As always, and as a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever fine podcasts are sold. Our regular episodes are Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Please like and subscribe on whatever medium you choose because we really appreciate it. And also it really helps us out. And when you get a chance, please review our podcast, give it as many stars and thumbs up as you can. Cause that also helps our metrics and just kind of spreads the fire pit fires. If you will, gets it out to other people who, uh, who would like to you know, hear us ramble about films and also agree with me that uh, Rudy is a Rudy Sue. Not a Rudy Sue. I'm making this trope. He's a Rudy Sue. No, Tom, we're not coining that. That's a bad coin. We're just going to return it. But also, um, be sure to join our Discord so you can disagree with Tom and agree with Dan and Josh. You can find us at uh, discord.me slash firepit. You'll get notifications of new episodes, and you'll get to chat with other uh, members of our Discord server like Tyric Thorne, Goodnight Punk, Zathmer, and uh, Danielle. And Rob of Rob's Custom PCs. We all uh, like to get on there and talk about upcoming episodes, past episodes, and share some funny gifts because we're all approaching our 40s, some more than others. <laughs> but, but again, that's uh, discord.me slash fire pit. You'll find the invite there. We hope to hear from you. And uh, you can email us uh, back at the uh, mentioned at the interspersal. And if you want to send us in, I don't know, a short message, happy message, tell Tom he's wrong. It's up to you. Mostly tell Tommy's wrong. And uh, also be sure to like our page on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at, at FirePitCCE. Also, uh, the Twitter handle, you can find a link to our Discord channel, so you can join that server from there, too. Both are linked in the episode's description at FirePit.Podbean.com. And I'd like to shout out two of our Facebook followers here, Lindy Inibear and Bootsman, two of our several hundred Facebook members who either listen to us actively, inactively, pop in every so often, uh, or just like to just have a Facebook page that supports just a trio of geeks who sit around and talk about movies. And note that Sean Astin's Rudy character is a Sue because he has to artificially enhance himself to match all the artificially enhanced antagonists who say he can't do it to an inhuman level. Thank you for agreeing with me there. And also the Zencaster for hosting this, allowing us to record and being fantastic recording software and helping to keep the fire pits burning. Tom, it's, it's, it's not going to take, just <laughs> stop trying to make that. That, yeah, that, that's not that's not saying, take it. Just, just, one semester, one semester of film does not give you the right to call Rudy yes. a Sue yes. character. He's not a Sue character. You really need to go back and study yes, what a Tom, Sue character it's is. Take off. It's streets behind, as the kids say. Hashtag Rudy Sue. But anyway, I would like to shout out uh, my wife for allowing me to do this again. I love her to death, and uh, she puts up with a lot of shit. Also, I'd like to shout out Zencaster, 
They are a fantastic platform if you do podcasts. But also, shout out to Sync Lounge and Plex. Mostly Sync Lounge because they do a, a great job of allowing us to watch these movies in sync and watch them uh, together. Separ- well, separated, but together. And so far, we haven't had major issues recently. But uh, it's been... Very, it's a very solid platform. And I would like to give a shout out to, obviously, to Peggy, the OG friend of the channel. Always thanks for listening. Uh, I'd also like to give shout outs to Travis, Anthony, Nick, friends from work that are listening, giving me some feedback at work. Awesome. Glad you guys are enjoying the show. Please continue to listen. Uh, join us on Discord. I know some of you guys got Discord, so join us and uh, come in on the conversations with us. Um, that would be great. But as always, Thanks for listening. Whether you want to participate more or not, thanks for listening. Fantastic. Again, despite my input on this, this is a great movie. And after the past two we saw, holy moly, a breath of fresh air. So what's next for the uh, podcast intramural sports type tournament next week? It's a, it's a jousting tournament, right? Oh, my God. No, no, no. You picked the list. Yeah. It's... um. It's tennis, a sport so confusing and stupid, one of the scores is love. I know tennis. I've played a lot of tennis on Wii. We will play, or we will watch Wimbledon next week. Wimble what? Wimbledon. It's it's a tennis thing where they play in England, and they have to wear all white, and they eat strawberries and cream and stuff. Oh, pretentiousness. Yes. Yeah. Tom's going to love this film. I probably am, but until then, I've been Tom. I've been Josh. And I've been Dan. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there. Wow. So everybody really loved that Ricky guy. We're not the bad guys for going so hard on that old guy, are we? Well, they're the ones letting an old person play football. Who's the bad guy now? Yeah. All right, so um, so so what's next on the tournament, guys? What was it? Jousting? No, it's tennis. This was your list, Tom. How can you not know? I wrote it down so I wouldn't have to remember. Hey, asshole! You forgot your game ball. <laughs> oh, God. Damn it! Damn it! Oh, jeez! Oh, jeez! Oh, oh, that's gonna leave a mark. Oh, so uh, who's in the mood to watch the greatest again? I think my Thuburu would look better if it was maroon. <laughs> Who's having trouble remembering now? <laughs> Where did we park? No Rickies were harmed in the making of this episode. <laughs> <laughs>